Hello and welcome to the show. We are back on Beam NG Drive with more of your automation rally cars tackling the Italian rally stage. We start with a vehicle built by Schwartz. This is, I'm going to try and pronounce this correctly, probably won't get it right, the Schwartz Inizuka 25B. It's a good looking car, this one. It does certainly look the part. It's got Race suspension without being sort of crazy high. Uh, engine wise, it is a two and a half litre twin turbocharged flat four up at the front, which flat fours have been actually very popular so far in this. It's four, it's four by four as opposed to all wheel drive, which I think means it's permanent 50 50 in terms of power uh, distribution. And the power wise, we're talking around the 320 horsepower mark, so fairly decent in terms of power. We have... Ah, we've got ABS. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, we're going to go for the brake test in the turn one. We do have ABS, which will make the car more consistent under braking in as far as I can just jump on the brakes, hold the brakes down, and we won't lock up, and it won't sort of spin under brake. We had one car that was locking the rear wheels and locking the rear wheels only, and that was very difficult to drive. However, downside of ABS, especially on this surface that we are driving on, is that uh, it makes braking distances longer. Oh, please stop. And sometimes we just don't stop uh, for the corner. Uh, alarmingly, that didn't really seem to be doing much in the way of steering towards the hairpin. I'm not sure it's going to enjoy the hairpins, this car. The engine... I might have slowed down. Oh, no. I was going to say, I might have slowed down a bit earlier there. Nope. <laughs> we almost... We were almost quite wide. Uh, so that's, I guess, about where we need to be braking. Through this next quarter, we... Kind of feels like you can take a lot more speed, however it just gets tighter and tighter until we have a really nasty, narrow exit point. And then hairpin... Oh no, we're not stopping there either. Okay, so, important things to note. Hates the hairpins. Absolutely hates the hairpins, this one. As we're going to run up towards the finish line. I mean, it's actually no, not a terrible time, considering... Uh, 24-3 from the car. Considering we had to grab reverse at one point and we missed the second hairpin entirely. 24-3 is not the worst. I actually thought that was going to be slower um, for an opening. Opening, considering all of the getting lost. It actually deals with the, the bumps very well, like even after the finish line. It keeps control nicely there. Uh, doesn't really need to worry about bumps on the actual run. Uh, this road, it's a funny old road kind of why I picked it. Um, it's not conventional off-roading. There's not massive bumps down here so much. We don't have any jumps and so on for the cars to have to try and deal with, but it is just very, very low grip. This sort of weird, dusty... I think it's like dusty concrete, but whatever it is, yeah, it's nasty for building cars for. Um, see, we feel okay grip-wise there. It's just the hairpins, the front end, has absolutely no interest in getting turned into. All right, here we go. We're slowed down... Nope, nope, nothing, 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 nothing. And then we try and get on the power out the other. If I get on that power too soon, we're just going to understeer a million miles wide. So, yeah, I'm not going to uh, until I have got the front end at least turned. It might just be that we're really struggling slowing the car down and I'm kind of braking while the ABS is going on and we just don't have any grip. Oh, that's exactly what I was talking about before with that corner, how it's it's very easy to think you can carry a lot of speed on the way in, because you can initially, however, the corner gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, it, no, it really doesn't do these hairpins at all. That's, that's really weird. It doesn't feel like it's horrendously low grip anywhere else on the course, but Christ at the hairpins, is it terrible? It just <laughs> it doesn't want to know. It doesn't want to get turned in. Well, there we go. That was uh, a big crash after the finish line. A uh, 25 for the vehicle. Hmm. The hairpins are the Achilles heel of this vehicle. The braking isn't the easiest thing to deal with. It's not likely to challenge, to do, challenge the scarab, the sunburst, and all of that sort of thing. No. Um, but the, the hairpins, we're losing a good old chunk of time. It is, funnily enough, an actually nice car to drive. Like, it's good to drive around this course. I like driving the vehicle. However, it is difficult to get speed out of it in comparison to the competition. Uh, come on now, let's get the hairpins. We've got to try and get these hairpins right this time around. See, it's been quick through there, so we'll be nice and early. 
on the brakes for the hairpin. Here we go. To turn in. Wait a year for it. And then, yeah, because if I jump on that power too soon, even then, you might have thought, well, that was, you know, I was sat waiting for ages to get on the power. I was. But even then, we were nearly in trouble on the exit. Uh, we almost don't have the grip in the car for these low-speed corners. Now, let's not do what I did last time around. Don't get carried away too much. We want to kind of be a little wide through the midsection there for an okay exit. It wasn't terrible on the exit. Kind of punched out the other side uh, with the car. Oh, come on now, you bugger. Nah, it's still really struggling with the hairpin. Uh, that was a panic and tried to get the hand. I don't think the handbrake really does much in this car. It doesn't really seem to work all that well. We've seen cars. I don't know what causes it, but we have seen cars with iffy handbrakes. Oh, just keep... Keep throttle down. It's a 23-1 in the end for the for the car. Those hairpins. Those hairpins were very, very mean to this vehicle. It just could not deal with them in terms of braking. That's one thing, but just in terms of sheer grip, it could not deal with the hairpins. So there we go. 23 one's not a terrible time. Fantastic looking car, but hairpins. The hairpins really, really murdered it. Up next, we have got something quite different, built by Onimus Platypus. This is the Tinfoil RS. Sports car body, quite high suspension. Quite high suspension. Might be soft, might be bouncy. We'll have to wait and see. Not massive brakes either on the car. We do have a handle at the front and a okay wing. Not a, not a full-on mighty wing, but an okay wing at the back. Uh, Engine-wise... Well, it's another flat four. Two litre twin turbo flat four in this one. The most powerful car of the day at uh, 384 horsepower. All-wheel drive, probably quite light. Could be very fast. Could be very fast. We could have body roll issues, though. So let's wait and see. We've got a sequential gearbox, which is nice. Suspect that will mean money has been saved elsewhere in the vehicle. Uh, we don't have ABS to be worrying about on this one, but we will have to therefore be worried about locking the brakes up on this horrible surface. Uh, we're going to chuck it. Oh, that's a lot of sideways, a lot more sideways than I would really like through here, although it's kind of, it moves around a lot, this car, but it is at least relatively controlled, although that's not going to have helped it. I thought, <laughs> literally, and I'll say it was moving around a lot, we were skidding around in the braking zone. That's the difficulty without ABS, is you do that sometimes when you try to slow it down. I think we locked it and just Lost, lost the back end over the edge of the cliff and we couldn't recover that one in time. So, the tinfoil RS is in the trees immediately. It felt bloody fast up until that point. I think this might be a quick car. It's going to be one of those that it's going to be quick if, it's con if I can keep it under control. Sometimes some of the fastest cars don't actually feel fast. The Nordic Wolf never really felt all that fast, but that was just because I think it was well controlled well composed around here. This feels fast, but it is about a millisecond away from disaster most of the time. And that's not necessarily what you want when you've only got three runs through a course. Uh, this time less sliding around. Yeah, there is not as much grip in this as you might want from a car. We're going to do a very, very similar thing down there. Handbrake works at least. Engine is good at pulling it out of these hairpins. Jesus, this thing shifts. I, I mean, it's a bit scary, I'm not going to lie. This thing is going very fast into some corners. Oh, it feels like it is. I mean, sense of speed is always a difficult thing to judge, but this does feel rapid. I can't look at the speed, though. This stage is too busy to really stand a chance of uh, looking at the speedo. We'll punch our way out through there. Now, we're up to the final hairpin. Chuck the car around there. Oh... It's going to be a little wide on the exit. Get off there. Oh, once you get your wheel stuck in that gutter, it's so hard to pull the car away. We've got the run to the finish. That is seriously quick. Accelerating. It's a 16.7, and we had big issues on that run. Whoa. <laughs> it's going to be really, really close is the answer to that. It's going to be so close to being able to beat the sunburst, I think. Cause we must have lost a second bouncing our way out of a hairpin down there. The question is going to be, can I keep control of it? Because this thing is mad. It's bonkers in terms of its... In terms of the way it picks up speed out of these corners. Its grip is okay, but it's not perfect, really. Uh, it is not an easy car to drive. The Nordic Wolf was 
fairly easy to drive quickly. This is anything but. We're a little sideways around there. I don't want to go too sideways and risk sliding over the edge, basically like we're about to do here. Uh, it is... Okay, we are survived that section. That bit there is really sketchy in the car. Around the hairpin we go. Get on the power out the other side. Yeah, the engine's very nice in this one. Works wonders on this course. Whiz past the rocks now. We're not quite as wide, but it's so sketchy under brakes there. So, so sketchy in general. Uh, lively, I think, perhaps more than sketchy. Thankfully, the signs are drive throughable on this course. Yeah, I've got to go with lively rather than sketchy because it's not... It's not undrivable, however, it is very excitable on this course. Around the final hairpin we go. I think we might have been a little too sideways in these hairpins. Either it's going to have worked with fantastic runs off of the corner, or we're going to have been too sideways and lost a bit too much time. This is savagely quick towards the line. Oh, oh, oh it's done it. It's had a massive accident after the finish line, but we have a new leader. 114.69. For the tinfoil RS, you are, as I said, you are about a millisecond from disaster almost constantly in this car. But if you get it right, it is phenomenally quick. It's got the acceleration. It's got very, very good drive out of the hairpins. It can carry good corner speed, but it's terrifying doing it. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's very, very quick. Very, very difficult to drive. Exciting. Lively and exciting. Where we go? That'll be my two words. No, lively, exciting, terrifying. That'll be my three word descriptions of this car. Either way, it goes fastest of the series so far. The next vehicle to run down the course has certainly got a tough act to follow. A built by Tabby's. It is the Crap Rally car. Good to see some confidence in the naming. Uh, looks terrified from the front. Now, this is an interesting contraption, shall we say. Uh, engine is at the back of this car. Engine is also a very, very small twin-turbocharged V6. It's a 1.6-litre twin-turbocharged V6 right at the very back, so you don't get much room to work with uh, down there. We are still all-wheel drive, just shy of 300 horsepower going on in this. So again, you know, we're talking decent power in this vehicle. We have had a rear engine. I think we had a rear engine hatch like this go uh, earlier in the series. They're kind of strange to get working possibly it might have some strange handling characteristics i don't know uh, we shall find out it's a noisy bugger of a car we again got the sequential double clutch oh okay so brakes are quite brakes are bloody good on this car by the looks of it uh not as mad accelerating as the tin foil nowhere near as mad accelerating as the tin foil Oh, God, maybe not quite as good turning in as the tinfoil as well. Tyres, uh, it's not on rally tyres. I didn't actually see what it is. I think it's on the same as the tinfoil RS ran. Oh, let's try and get that slowed down. Okay. So far, pretty decent. I do think we might be... Uh, turbo lag's not been terrible. Oh, clipped a rock, took out a front... That's the tidiest of clips on the rock, and the front tyre's gone. It's not actually affecting it all that bad, so I'm just going to keep ploughing on. Uh, <laughs> might be the tiniest sort of little nick on the front left, rather than a full-on... Oh, that's going to done it worse. Uh, so the tyres are strange. Very, very kind of almost low-profile tyres going on. It feels like it's very small tyres, very small... Uh, very small like, profile tyres, small wheels uh, on here. Handling is pretty solid. Um, turn in is actually yeah, very good. I've got to be careful not to uh, end up clipping the rocks in a couple of places. I think it's going to be pretty quick. Again, not sure about it beating the madness that is the top of the leaderboard, but I think it could set a respectable time. The rear engine doesn't really create any peculiar handling characteristics from this one. Alright, we've got to get through the uh, gears early on. Yeah, that's kind of a bit funky getting into the first corner. Oh, are we going to be okay down there? We are. Okay, so suspension on this is pretty sorted. It's got enough compliance to get across like that inside bits of dirt without it wobbling. I mean, it judders a little bit. We see that from a few a few guys. You kind of see it there. It's sliding. It's almost wheel hopping across the road. Not terrible, though. We've seen a lot worse from cars. Yeah, the brakes on this are fantastic. Uh, I have actually got it stopped a little too well, though, down there. That's, uh, 
There's a very fine line. There's a very fine line in this car, apparently, between getting it stopped right for a corner and just coming to a complete halt. I guess we are at such very slow corners. Um, yeah, if we just drag the brake a little too much, you get in trouble. Oh, we're a little wide through all of this. Uh-oh. No, that's fine, actually. Just straighten it up for the exit. There we go. Uh, <laughs> it's a strange... Okay, I, I say what I take it back about the rear engine. It's not terrible to drive at all. Oh, no, I overcorrected on the bloody exit of the hairpin. I really hate these hairpins sometimes. I think... I think it's possible. If things start going a little wrong with this car, like once it starts sliding, the back just wants to kind of stay hung out. Yeah, that's difficult to recatch. It's quick. Apparently that didn't count as crossing the finish line. Not sure about these checkpoints. That is actually pretty quick, because that was a terrible run, and we did a 120-something oh, at the point we were upside down across the line. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's a very poorly car. Uh, however, oh, if it starts sliding around, it's really sketchy. I feel like it wants to slide around, but I don't feel like in the three runs I get, you are even close to be able to control that. It's too unpredictable when it's moving around. And this is the difficulty when you only have a limited amount of time with a difficult to drive car. You know, I thought the tinfoil might... The tinfoil is one of those that could go fast or could wreck. This is another one. Could go fast. Slightly different way, I feel, almost with this. It's not quite as brutal. And if you keep everything under control, it's fine. But if it's, if it's when you overstep that mark, it's what the car does then. That is the almost unknown factor. Uh, so I'm just going to have to be... We've got to be a little bit careful on this final run because well, this is the one that's going to count. I almost don't want to slide the car. I just don't trust it if it's moving around. The tin foil was okay. I trusted that car enough that if it got a little oversteer, it wasn't going to be a horribly uh, fiddly thing to, to catch this. I just don't. Oh, and it does want to move. I guess that sort of weight at the back does want to just sort of swing around. Now, I slow down into this next section. Don't get carried away on the exit. It's a little slide, nothing terrible. Into the last of the hairpins we go. Uh, little, little, little shonky. But we are out the other side without putting a wheel in the ditch. Oh, we've thrown it in there with a bit of speed. You can get away. You can kind of hit the banking on the other side. It is quick as well. 17.5. Big hit on the jump. That's a fast time as well for the bit. We've got some very fast cars running down here. Yeah, a little fiddly to drive. I feel like maybe in the hairpins... If you threw it sideways, or if you got it right and chucked it sideways in the hairpins and booted it out the other side, it would work. But doing that is so dangerous and so difficult, so risky... It's, the, the chance of you crashing in the three runs is just not worth it. Uh, so, yeah, we played it a little bit safe. And it did the job. You know, it did the job. Engine worked very well. I was worried you might have a big turbo lag from a small engine and very big turbos. However, that was picking up nicely. Geared nicely to get it out of those hairpins, get it accelerated. Turns out, not really a crap rally car after all. Well, our final vehicle to run today is not a sensible one. That much is for sure. Built by Sir Argos, it's called the Falcon 6900. It's a massive, massive truck, this one. Uh, Engine-wise, we are different. At the front, it is a 7-litre naturally aspirated V8. Tyres are massive around here as well. It is under budget. I say it's under budget. All of the cars are, but we're talking 14,987. The most expensive car to run today. Uh, Power-wise, it's just shy of 380 horsepower, so fairly similar power to the tinfoil, but much heavier, much larger. I mean, it's got a table shoved at the back. <laughs> it's a silly vehicle. It's got a lot of wings going on. Um, I mean, let's be honest here. Not expecting this to challenge the sunburst. Oh, it's got uh, very, very... It's got very short gears, so I kind of tried to spam it out of first. I knew it was going to be in first for very long and didn't quite get it right. Tell you what, it actually doesn't turn too badly through that second corner. The change of direction there wasn't terrible in this at all. Oh, okay, we don't have the grip. It is quite heavy. I think it's like over two tons, so <laughs> it's, it's one of the heavier vehicles. I mean, it's certainly one of the larger vehicles course that's going to run down here. I'm a little concerned about clipping the wing on stuff. At least, I guess, if I hit the wing on something, the wing will fall off, and just the wing will fall off. There we go. We're wait, just, we're wait saving as we go. I guess we lost a little bit of downforce from that. Uh, oh, God, changing gear constantly in this. I mean, 
it's not the worst thing in the world to drive. Oh, there goes the front bumper. We're more weight saving. It's the... <laughs> it shall be... It shall be well under two tons by the time I'm finished running it down this uh, down this stage. I don't know whether beam actually takes into consideration body parts falling off as weight saving, but there we go. Oh, here we go. Chuck it in to the hairpin and we're gonna end up. Oh, there goes another wing. <laughs> We've lost half of the vehicle before we cross the finish line. Uh oh, that's not very nice through there. Uh, <laughs> it's a little sketchy. <laughs> the time it's actually not terrible 24 2 for the pink and gold pickup truck that has lost most of the bits and pieces you know if i get a decent run like a 22 might not actually be that impossible what did the fun police do a 23 8 so that was the big massively powerful van was that a v12 van i can't remember that was the, the massive van with a lot of power uh this might actually be able to beat it I think it might if I don't hit any... If I get the braking right, again, we're, we're going to be talking about... Well, we are talking about braking a lot. Um, with two vehicles today. Oh, messed up the start slightly. Uh, yeah, if I get the braking right, get the gearing right, we'll potentially be okay. This one here, it's not so much... It's not ABS that we're fighting with, it's just it's a big truck. It's just a lot of weight to try and slow down. Uh, I'm not actually sure what brakes we've got going on in this. Uh, it does have off-road tyres. We saw massively wide off-road tyres on the on the truck shall we try and uh oh carry some speed into there i was trying to i was trying to leave it as late as i could to turn in to get a good run but i left it a little too late we don't quite have the grip to do what i was doing with the rally cars lost a wheel that wheel came off suspiciously easily as well <laughs> okay that run not so great we got to get one more go one more go with the falcon and hope for the absolute best. No silly mistakes on this run. Carefully does it in some places. I mean, I, you know, this is always expected to be a silly vehicle. Truth is, it's not the worst I've driven. It's not the worst I've driven by a long way. It's actually surprisingly good. In fact, it might even be one of the better off-road tired vehicles uh, around here in terms of in terms of grip, perhaps, in terms of consistency, but, you know, when you've got so much truck to move about, it's always going to struggle. Uh, the engine's, you know, fun. It's nice to have a big, naturally aspirated V8. Uh, it will pick up out of these corners very, very nicely. Plenty of power, plenty of torque. Uh, now, I'm not going to be flat through there. I don't trust the truck to be flat through there. It's only a small... We only have to have a small go on the brakes. Uh, I don't know what gear we're in. Thankfully, it doesn't, always doesn't matter. If I'm in a slightly too high a gear, the engine's got the power and the torque to be okay with it, uh, which is a nice thing. When you've got a million things to worry about because you're in a giant gold pickup truck going down a rally stage, the fact that the engine can be in almost whatever gear it wants to be in, whatever gear you've left it in by accident, uh, that's quite nice. Hairpins, not the vehicle's best friend. It does turn better than that first car in some ways. Uh, it doesn't look as good as the uh, Schwarzer, but it does uh, does turn actually quite nicely into these corners. It is going to be a 22.8. That's <laughs> surprisingly respectable right there. That is surprisingly respectable. It's over a second quicker than... In fact, no, it's exactly a second quicker than the Fun Police. It's not awful to drive. I mean, it's a big, heavy truck, and you've got to drive it as such. It's not the fastest accelerating... You know, it's got good power, but it's probably twice the weight of the tinfoil. And with about the same horsepower, if anything, five horsepower less or something. So, that's, you know, that's, that's good. For a mad, mad-looking pickup truck, that is actually a pretty damn respectable tyre. But a pretty nice vehicle to drive. Massive tyres will probably have helped it down there. Massive weight, maybe not. But, you know, we've got to have the silly vehicles along the way. And this one has certainly, certainly fit the bill. So, on to our leaderboard, and we have a new first place car. The Tinfoil RS will take the top spot away from the Nordic Wolf. It beats the Sunburst. The Sunburst is still clinging on the podium spots for now, but we have two of your automation cars uh, beating the Sunburst Rally car. 
Yeah, that's a fast time. That's a very fast time. It's not by a huge amount, but it is it is quick once you can, if you can, keep it all together over the course of a run. The crap rally car, as I said, turns out to be not all that bad. It will take a fifth place on 17.5. Beats the Fiat to Bath. Beats the Mad Mini. Beats Carl. Doesn't quite... Uh, it's a couple of seconds down on the likes of the Scarab and the Sunburst. Not quite up there with the very fast vehicles, but... Yeah, it was a pretty damn solid, solid choice. We do have to go a little bit further down to find the other vehicles from today's episode. It is a 19th and 20th place for the Falcon and the Schwarzeroo. 22.8, though, from that Falcon, I think, is a big truck. That's remarkably fast. It's a second quicker than the Fun Police van thing. And, yeah, it was built as a purely bonkers entry and <laughs> it's able to do some decent things the uh, Schwarzeroo is it's a nice car to drive but the braking and the dealing with the hairpins it just couldn't do and in the end that cost it interestingly they're all beaten by the W90 that rear wheel drive car that W90 still holds the two wheel drive record That's, that puts into perspective how fast that W90 was that though is going to be it for this episode thank you all very much for watching and until next time a goodbye.